All right, guys, we are out here in the Valley of the Kings. This is the Valley of the Kings. Can you believe it? Here in Egypt, <clears throat> it's an amazing place. It's pretty hot out here, but I wanted to show you. This is the entrance to King Tut's tomb. And uh, uh, in 1922, Howard Carter uh, and Mr. Lord Carnarvon found this place. It's a pretty amazing place. Now, uh, it, it is really in a valley. I'll show you later on Google Earth what it looks like, but it's, it's, it's definitely in a valley. It's, it's south of what you would think is uh, where these would be located. It's not even near the, the pyramids, in case you're wondering, but this is the Valley of the Kings, okay? And this is King Tut's tomb here. All right, so we're going to go take a little tour of it, so come and join us. All right, here we go. So we are now here in, in, in King Tut's tomb. It's a pretty amazing place. In fact, um, it's, it's really, uh, I can't describe the way it feels. It's kind of eerie in a way, given the, the uh, history of the curse and so on. You may not know what that all is about, but I want you to go research that. In fact, uh, as you're watching the documentary, you'll hear some things about it and in the reading uh, and in the PowerPoint in just a moment. But the curse of King Tut, it, it kind of is... It kind of weeds you out to be here. But as you can see in the back, it's an amazing, it's beautiful here. And you can see the elaborate paintings. I'm going to step to the side here so that you guys can see King Tut's face. That's right. Now, this is uh, a part of his tomb. This is his tomb. This It's a very small room, as you can see, uh, the walls on, on all sides. But if you look at King Tut's face there, isn't that amazing? Um, that is one of the sarcophagus, sarcophagi, uh, that that is that is gold that his body would have been placed in. Isn't that amazing? And look at, look in the back, you will see King Tut dressed in white, and uh, that actually is a depiction of King Tut uh, by being escorted into the afterlife by Anubis. Now, if you'll notice some of the dots that are back there, that was where mold had had grown. Some people say that it was because of the painting had not dried when they when they first closed up the tomb, and they had to close it so quickly. Now remember, this is not as elaborate as some of the other tombs. Why? Well, because King Tut died so soon, and, and he died at the age of 19. They think it was some sort of accident. Some uh, said murder, but I think they ruled that out. And so they're pretty sure it was some sort of accident. And so they had to paint all of this and get this tomb ready very quickly, which is, which is an amazing thing. So here it is. Uh, come on over here, and we'll, we'll try to show you a different angle. Okay? All right. All right, guys. So uh, this is King Tut's tomb. He is right over there. This is his sarcophagus. Uh, isn't that amazing to look over there and see him? Now, look, uh, again, you can see a little different angle. You can see the baboons on the wall over there and the pictures right above that. Again, his Tut's um, entrance into the afterlife and the things that took place um, as he would journey through there. And again, Anubis leading him through and introducing him and, and encouraging him to go, to go through. Uh, just words cannot describe what it feels like to be in this room. And so, um, King Tut's tomb. I hope, uh, hope you've enjoyed being here. Okay, let's, let's go learn and talk about this. So, so the entranceway was right here, and as we walked down in there, the first room, of course, it's empty now, except for uh, just some some things on display. Um, but these things were the first thing, things that Mr. Carter, Howard Carter, and Mr. Carnarvon, Lord Carnarvon, found as they went in there. And it wasn't just treasure. It was things that he would actually need in the afterlife. For example, these are food rations several portions of food rations and other just items that 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 they thought he would need uh, that we'll mention later on now if you will look in the back there's even more more items and then of course if you enter this room here which is where we were standing uh, just a moment ago this is the actual tomb area and when they first found it it was encased in all of this okay and again here's the tomb and uh, all the paintings and so on it's, it's actually very small considering um, the barrel chamber, that is, you can see here, was very small considering some of the other kings and pharaohs that we have found 
uh, which are more elaborate. Now, through the wall here was where all the most expensive and the, the treasures were found. And, and these are all housed in the museum. And I encourage you to go to the modules and look and take that virtual tour of the museum. It's, it's pretty fascinating. And even Tut's death mask is still there. Now, now the curse of King Tut's tomb. The reason I was saying is how, how eerie it is in there is because it was in November 4th, 1922, when Lord Carnarvon asked Howard Carter, can you see anything? And Carter replied, yes, wonderful things. Now that has been a very popular saying, yes, wonderful things, but you can imagine they're entering into this tomb um, when, when Lord and Howard Carter said, can, what, what can you see? Can you see anything? Yes, wonderful things. And obviously it, it really is, isn't it, when you, when you look at it. Here's a, here's a picture of the two guys, uh, Lord Carnarvon and Howard Carter, during and around the time they found this. All right. Now, Lord Carnarvon was a very wealthy man. And he actually funded the search for King Tut. Howard Carter had kept looking and kept looking. Um, and he eventually, Carnarvon wasn't going to, um, going to continue to fund this, but he eventually found the tomb. Howard Carter searched for the tomb for five years. And in 1922, he found the most famous archaeological find, the tomb of King Tut, or Tutankhamun, as you might say. Here are the words written across the seal of King Tut's tomb in Egypt. Death shall come on swift wings to him that toucheth the tomb of Pharaoh. Isn't that fascinating? Now, when this tomb was disturbed for the first time, when Carter went in, you can just imagine the shock that it sent through the, the tomb itself. It had not had air um, since it had was covered up 3,400 years ago. And so what an amazing find and just astounding to even think about standing in there. Now, who was King Tut anyway? Who was he? Well, Tut was an Egyptian king that is most famous for his death than for his life. Again, as I mentioned a moment ago, he most likely died at 19. He was only eight when he, he began to rule somewhere in there between eight and 10. Can you imagine being 10 years old? And some of you are uh, 10 to 12 years old. Can you imagine ruling over Egypt and, and being responsible for that? Very few written documents on Tut survive, and not very much is known of his life. Tut's most famous because of his spectacular uh, tomb was discovered almost intact and filled with all kinds of treasures and jewels and, and other items that we talked about. Okay. Now some of those items, as you can see here, this is obviously a display of what it might have looked like. But the most famous piece of archaeological treasure that has ever been found, really, is this thing right here. And that's King Tut's death mask. That's why you see it on a lot of things. That's why you, you uh, are able to, when you see ancient history, uh, maybe advertisements or trailers or something like that, you always see King Tut's death mask. Why? Because it's the most famous find. All right, and so this stuff really excites me. Now, there are two words that describe why the Egyptians were so into pyramids and mummies, and that's the afterlife. Their mummification process stemmed from their beliefs in the afterlife and their polytheistic beliefs, okay? Um, on the day that the entrance to the tomb was laid open, Carter's pet canary was eaten by a cobra. And that's right, think about that for a moment. Cobra, canary. Cobras are very rare in Egypt. Now, I want to ask you something. Do you think that that was a rumor? I think that was a fact. Hmm, interesting, huh? Carter did have a canary, but he gave it to a friend to keep. No one knows for sure about the cobra, all right? Some of the Egyptian workers were, uh, who were present when the tomb was opened died within a year. That's actually true. Six out of the 26 workers were dead within 10 years. Now, here's the, here's the most suspicious and odd thing, okay? This one actually happened for real. It's very strange. Lord Carnarvon and archaeologist Howard Carter entered the king's burial chamber on February 17th, 1923, on or about March 6th, Lord Carnarvon was bitten by a mosquito on his cheek and became ill. The mosquito bite became infected. He uh, contracted pneumonia and blood poisoning, and on April 5th, he died. The bite was in the same spot on his cheek as a scar found on the mummy of Tut. Ah, I think there's anything strange to that. More strange happening. At the same time Carnarvon died, all the electricity in Cairo went off. In fact, the lights in the hospital went off almost the second when he died. At the same hour Carnarvon died, Carnarvon's pet terrier, Susie, howled and dropped over dead. 
Again, very strange things, right? Now I want to ask you, whatever happened to Howard Carter? Hmm, go research that. What happened to Howard Carter? Where is he buried today? What do you think would be a possible explanation for the deaths of the workers in the tomb as well as, as, well as um, all the other strange happenings? And what do you think people would say if something similar happened today and the new p newspapers read a curse like it did in those days? Certainly a very, very, very interesting story this is. An amazing place to be. And I hope you enjoyed this, this uh, short study. Again, go and do your assignment. Answer some questions about the passage there, as well as uh, explore in the virtual museum. And I will be a happy teacher, and you will be a happy student just by learning about King Tut, one of the most famous archaeological finds, if not the most famous in all the world ever. Thank you, and happy learning.